Here's a question for you. How much money would someone have to pay you to give up the internet for the rest of your life? Oh, wow. That is a fantastic question. So would a million dollars be enough for you to never use the internet again? Me? Nah. Well, I, I don't even know if I could take on that challenge. My whole life practically comes out of there. It would have to be something in excess of 15 to 20 million dollars. A couple million, billion. I think it would be in the billions. When I ask my students this question, oh, you couldn't pay me enough. Five million, no, 10 million. A billion dollars. SMU professor Michael Cox spends a lot of time thinking about new technology. So let me ask you a different question. How much do you have to pay in order to use them? 10 million? A million? 100,000? Even a thousand? No. Internet access costs just pennies a day. And so what the market has done is created a tremendous gap between worth, how much you'd pay for it, and cost. It's cheap to get online and getting cheaper all the time. In fact, the price of high-speed access has dropped more than 50% over the past two years. All kinds of things are getting cheaper. Univac leads the field of electronic computing. The first computers were big and slow, and they cost millions of dollars. Here's a camera that's built with fun in mind. It wasn't long ago that this camera was a big deal. Same for video cameras like this. But today, smartphones come with video cameras, still cameras, and all kinds of other features built in. This is what the first cell phones looked like when they came out in the mid 80s. Price tag, $4,000. Wow, $4,000? Nah. This product I saw recently, this is a 3G phone, was $39. Do you ever wait for the price of a product to go down before you buy it? Yes, ma'am. The um, iPad. Many of us wait for a cheaper price. But why do things get cheaper? When a new good comes out, we get in a line. We all get in a line for it. But the wealthiest people be in the front of the line. They pay the highest price and get the worst version of the product. My reaction is obviously, you know, Michael Douglas in uh, Wall Street on the beach. Astonish me, pal. Douglas plays the villain Gordon Gecko in the 1987 film. He's super rich, but his phone had no memory, no apps, no music. It's pretty much a brick with buttons. So during those first few years, products are very expensive as those development costs are paid. Developers experiment with the new technology and figure out how they can make big bucks by selling it to more people. But most people won't spend thousands of dollars for a cell phone, so they wait. If everybody waited, then the product would die on the vine. It would never make it to the market. So somebody is paying that cost of the first product to keep it from dying, and that's the rich. Real life Gordon geckos buy the products when they're expensive. And that lets us enjoy the cheaper, better versions. Capitalism has its own built-in welfare transfer system. Imagine if cell phones still cost $4,000. Do you think if phones cost that much today, you would have one? No, I would not. But today, we all enjoy things that are vastly superior to what the richest people in the world owned just a short while ago. And many things, like aspirin and air conditioning and fully loaded cars, weren't even available a century ago. It's just ridiculously fun. And it goes far beyond the fun stuff. New technology lets us keep up with loved ones across the globe. It improves lives and saves lives in countless ways. And that was brought to you by the private sector. Cox says it starts with millions of Americans just going to work each day, trying to make things better for themselves and their families. Things get better because in order for me to succeed, I have to pay attention to your needs and wants. I have to create a product that you'll voluntarily buy, so I cannot make myself better off apart from making you better off as well. Apple can't force you to buy its products. The company makes so much money because it's really good at figuring out what people really like. That's why capitalism, paradoxically, it starts with self-interest, but it's guided by freedom, maximizes social welfare. Even during tough economic times, Americans live much more richly than previous generations, yet few of us consider ourselves rich. Oh, wow. Uh -oh. No, not rich. I'm, I'm, I'm like in the middle class. Just like middle class. I like, am in the middle. You know. But in some ways, maybe we're all millionaires and billionaires if we have something that's worth that much to us, something that lets us do so much. So think about it. How much is all of that worth to you? You might just be richer than you realize. <laughs>